Shall I start? Okay, let's get started. I have a couple of comments first. Well, Agile Summit put me into a very tough competition. I have two foreign uh, sessions running at the same time. One is from scrum.org, so I wanted to thank you all being here listening to me instead of them. The second one is, interestingly, today at the morning, Niels, was, who is German, was talking about talking in English, which is not his native tongue, and us as Turkish, which is not our native tongue, but, but that was the only language that we can you know, communicate. Here, I guess, most of our Turkish. I am Turkish, and we are talking in English. Funny. We are recording. OK. Good reason. We are recording. And this is an international summit, right? Yes. Great. OK. Um, the topic of my talk is the problems that we solve and created with Agile approach. It's a short version, because the longer version is the problems that we create and solve and create and solve and create and solve and create and solve. And it keeps going. So let's, let's start with knowing MXAPT first. Um, MXAPT is founded in 2001. It's been 13 years, so it's not a really young startup company, but it's growing like a startup, and it has a soul of having a startup. We have around 3 million customers, and those 3 million customers are ordering around 80,000 orders per day. As far as I know, this is the most, the, the, the most transactions per day in e-commerce in Turkey, which end up around uh, 220,000 meals per day. This is, I guess, the number of people that we touch with our meals per day. And we are uh, dealing with 10,000 plus restaurants. Uh, MXAPT is our flagship uh, product, but you may know we are growing in, in terms of geography, and we, are, we have uh, the same business uh, growing, growing geographically with put on click brand name. So we are in United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and Lebanon. We also acquire a company in Greece, uh, which name is Click Delivery, which is not so far in our product. Uh, platform, but it's going to be. And we have other businesses. We have uh, Lokum, which is a local gourmet site. We have Papion, which is our online restaurant and reservation platform. We have Irmik, our B2B e-commerce portal for restaurants only. And we have Yemek.com, which is the Turkish food content portal which is very young, just one month old. So these are the whole business that we are, as IT, making product about. So uh, what are the problems that we are trying to solve? We try to understand the market and putting our wrong product. Is it the problem? We deliver on time, on cost, on budget, but the product wasn't successful. Is it the problem? Uh, customer feedback. We're getting customer feedback and changing our product according to them. Looking for ways to continue to improve our process. Or empowering our people to make more intelligent decisions. So empowering teams, enabling them to inspect and adapt and figuring out the requirements as they go. Not beforehand, but as they go. So these are the problems that we think we are trying to solve. Right? Is that the case? Well, these are all nice, but not really. So in fact, executive thinks something else. 
constantly blowing our past commitments. We are always late. Poor quality products. We try to catch our deadline, which end up poor quality products. Transparency, what's going on? What's the progress? Is it done? Get products into market first. We don't talk at all. Cost too much, way too much resources on something and not enough for other things. Support is always interrupting our product development. So these are the real problems, in fact, executive, executive things and try to solve using agility. The previous slide is nice, but this is the real problem. And in short, predictability, quality, and early return on investment. This is the problems that we should you know, think about. So before we get into Agile, the questions that we got at the MXFT was, so I had a project, what happened? Is it done? Is it gonna be? When? I have a very urgent request. In fact, the, the deadline was yesterday. Can we do it? They say it's done, but it's not on the platform. When is it gonna be? So we have an emergency. I just came out from a meeting, and we have to do it. Dropping everything down, and we have to do it this as soon as possible. And all of these IT resources, what they are, do what they are doing? So what I, more, what I want is more important than what department X does. Okay, let's do it mine, not theirs. So I have an interesting secret to share with you. Agile has a rhyme, in fact, with Agile. Okay, so how do you measure the priority of a request? So urgent is it Agil in Turkish? All you have to do is count letter L in your emails. Okay, I like this one. I died and writing you from hell, if you not do it, you're gonna be there soon. This is the prioritization. You get the idea. Well, what's the root cause of this? What was it? So this is a really statistics. Any given six month period of time, at the end of the period, if you count the project that you've done, you end up seeing that 40% of the time, the project is done you have no idea at the beginning of the period, which results in there are some projects at the beginning of the time you said you promised to do it, either you don't do it or you do it late. So if you live like this, IT management is the real political arena. You juggle, people talk to you, people try to get into you. So it's, 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 it's chaos. So is it us as IT? Or is it the spoiled business? Or is it the process itself? So that was the beginning of the MXFT's journey into Agile. And what happened? We sit down and talk about it. We talk, we try to understand what the problem is. And we came up with some idea what was wrong. So the monitoring result, there are so many of them, but three of them I will show, is that working too, on too many projects at the same time. Trying, not trying focus, but resulting slow progress due to switching cost and unfocus. Priority is setting off. Everybody says that theirs is more important than the others, and too many interruptions, mostly on planning and status request because of invisibility. The solution, Agile in IT, and MXFT began to apply Scrum in 2012. 
So in fact, agility is not a new concept. It's been there for a long time. In fact, it's 1859, Charles Darwin wrote Origin of the Species. So it's not the strongest one, it's not the intelligent one, it's the one who can adapt to changes. So this is the idea behind agility. So what we did, we create cross-functional teams and they have a set of responsibilities. They know what to do, they know their respons responsible areas. We lower the number of projects to focus at the same time. We increase transparency. We let everyone know what we are doing with digital boards and with physical boards. We begin to measure key performance indicators and let everybody see them too. We make sure the priority is managed properly and get stakeholders and upper business management into the action and establish the business IT alignment and create a continuous improvement Kaizen culture. So this is our business chart, I guess. We have stakeholders at the top of the chart. We have product managers in between. We have product owners working with stakeholders and product management at the same time with the IT teams. So we have several teams focusing on different areas. One is dealing with Team XAPT, the other one is dealing with all the back office, another one dealing with architecture, performance, R&D, and some centralized features. We have infrastructure team, we have another team for food on click, and we have a, another team for all our verticals. We also have subject matter experts who are designers, are on mobile team. Have you noticed the 500T? Do you know what it is? Beşiş T. Cevizli Bağ Tuzla. Okay. This is their names. So boards. Burn down charts, meetings. And three questions we always ask to ourselves. What did we do good and keep doing it? It's, no, it's, it's, it's very essential to know what you're doing good. As a culture, we always focus on bad, but we should know also the good part too. And also the secondly, what did we do wrong and stop doing it? And as an improvement, what else can we do? These are the questions we always ask to ourselves in order to inject the Kaizen culture. That's the end of it. That's the end of the slides, right? It's the bed of roses. It's a rose garden. There's no problem with it. Everything is fine. Everything is perfect. We've done it. We, did, we haven't failed at all. Right? Most of the slides, most of the presentations stopped there. Of course, it wasn't the case. So if you're not in the agile world and want to get in, you have to know that it's a journey. You have a target, but the target is moving. So it's not stationary. It requires a cultural change. It's not just ceremonies. It's not methodology. You have to change. The way you think, it's a paradigm shift. Most of it starts at IT, but shouldn't stop there. If it stops there, you're just fooling around. So it must involve business. HR, product management, sales and marketing, operation, everybody. <coughs> they should involve, at least they should know what you're doing. And you must have executive team support. You have to manage the expectations. And don't overestimate it. It's not a solution for everything. It's just an improvement what you're actually now doing. 
And most importantly, I guess the essential part of my talk is that it creates its own problem. And you have to be aware of that. You have to identify that. You have to solve that. And it's a cycle you have to go through all the time. So at the beginning, functional team structure versus cross-functional team. So this is not Agile 101. I guess you all understand what cross-functional team means. So you don't have teams in IT that does only business analysis, only front-end, only back-end, only test. You, you have to have people in a team, in a stationary team, that has a set of responsibility and can able to do project end-to-end. -end. It's a huge change. It's not like you have a project and you pick some people from other departments and create a team just for that project. It's a huge difference. Skill gaps. Every single team member must function their original functional as good as it should be. So think about front-end team. This is the most important part, maybe. Uh, this is the most interesting part I can give you as an example. Because front-end, the, the, the origin of the front-end is changing. And JavaScript is getting more importantly every day. So if you are in a front-end team, most of the people in that team, as a functional team, has HTML and CSS knowledge, not JavaScript. If you function as a, team, as a functional team, a project comes to you, to the department, and you can solve it. HTML and CSS parts from one guy and JavaScript from other guy. With, you, with the cross-functional team, you may have only one team member, which has to done everything by himself or herself. So you have to improve every single team member's skills in order to complete your action without any dependency from other teams or other departments. Career issues. We are Turkish people, if you know what I mean. So department or team lead, the titles, it becomes obsolete. You're just a developer. You're losing power, right? You're destroying your managerial hierarchy. The real power comes from the knowledge and experience. We don't have a team leader, but we up, we look up to the most knowledgeable people in the team because they have the power. So every function has its own career path now. Fight for position is over. If you want to be a team leader, and there's a team leader, you can't go there. But if you improve yourself, if you improve your skills, you can be senior. You can be something else. You can go up. No one is stopping you. And technical craftsmanship versus managerial positions. In Turkey, if you want to get a better benefit package for technical people, it's obvious that you should go to managerial positions. Not in our case. Because you end up having a very good technical people person turning into a very bad management. Okay? And it may not fit into his or her career path. Just because of benefit package, it shouldn't be done. And you have to pay enough to let him do whatever he wants to do and what he do better, and stop worrying about technical or managerial positions. So Scrum is like a democracy. It's not the best thing. But it's the best thing so far. Everybody is complaining about democracy. It's not the best management style of the country, but it's the best so far. So we keep searching to improve it. 
So in our experience, for the first year, you must follow Scrum by the book. This is our um, experience. Because if you don't, the people who are resisting, who didn't get it, can break it, break the Scrum rule by rule. OK? What if we can't do this instead of this? Let's do this way. It's very appealing because it's very close to what you already did but failed. But you have to, you have to follow the Scrum rules by the book for the first year in order to get it. Because it's about practice. If you don't do it, you don't, you don't get to see the benefits of it. And it takes some time to really understand the principles, the philosophy behind it. So once you pass the fighting stage and everybody get it, you must understand any problems it creates and you begin to improvise. What's working with you? What's not working with you? But I have to warn you, there is a very thin line between Scrum bot and improvisation. The soul of the principles, the, 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 the essential part of the principles, the manifesto itself, should guide you. Because otherwise, you may end up Scrum bot. So I have a case study for you. We have a team called S4. I'll remind you that that team consists of more experienced people in our IT. They are responsible with technical architectures, performance, R&D, and they're supporting other teams too. The members of the team is like the dream team. They are natu they're all natural leaders. They have super egos. Well, not in a bad manner, anyway. Some of them are here. And most of them are, were Scrum Masters. So they know, they know the, method the methodology by heart. And they, they are the ones who are paying most of the technical debts. Privilege or curse, as a CTO, I am the product owner. So they're working very closely with me. So problems, interestingly, remember, they are the most senior people in the team. They always, mostly, let's say, let's be fair, they're almost finishing their PBIs late. If not, not at all. And they're beating them, your, themselves up. Not me, themselves. They say, how could I find? How could I fail? And they say, having 40% of their time goes by interruptions, and it's normal, because it's their responsibility. Interestingly, they have double personality. They are forcing other teams to apply Scrum, but they are the ones who are failing it. And they feel watchdog. And they're not able to work as a whole team on an NPBI. They don't have a single project who can be done, all of them at the same time. They have several projects done by Combinations, two, three people at most. And the funny thing is, because they're seniors, everybody knows them, and they say, everybody says, what does a third do anyway? What do they do? They don't do features, and they are the reference, and everybody says, oh, if the, the team A does it, if not S4, it could be done in couple of days, not weeks. So what do they do? 
these were, these were the problems that we faced and we changed things. The solution, we stopped using Scrum for the team. We switched to Kanban because Scrum focuses on sprints and tasks done within the sprints. Kanban is more flow, more working progress uh, PBIs. We said, okay, we don't have to, we all, we all have to be a team, but we don't have to be a team to work on projects all the time at the same time. Oops, something happened. They gave up being Scrum Masters. In fact, that was a very healthy move from us because previously they were Scrum Masters, they were team leaders, and that's the why. That's why they feel watchdogs. We had another monitoring meeting, and they handed over their Scrum Master roles to other people. Let them know that being a Scrum Master not, doesn't mean that you have to be senior or technically uh, upper level. So that was a case study. Relationship, relationship between teams and communication. So Scrum focuses on team making a group of people a team. That's essential. But sometimes, if you really focus on this, you forget that IT itself is a team. And you lose connection between teams. So you have to do something about it. So we do experience sharing, sharing by seminars, parties, football match, pizza parties, whatever. Just to make sure teams are talking together. Again, focusing on cross-functional team is great, but it may let each function members in a team lose connection with the same functionality in other teams, ending up going different directions within the same function. In fact, I was the only one at the beginning who realized this because one of our front team was using Google Closure as a library, as a JavaScript library. The other one is AngularJS. They didn't know, they didn't talk to each other. And I was the one who said, let's, let's come together and do it. So the, the solution for this is communities of practices. Okay, this slide may be able to explain you. So we have, in fact, two working communities. The first one is front-end communities. The second one is test communities. So basically, the testers from different, depart different teams can come together, talk together, find the solution, and apply them in every team. That's the way to really maintain the architecture, architecture of, the, of the whole source code. So feedbacks, this is another topic. We always think Scrum and close feedbacks as a way of improving products. It's essential, right? It's also essential for the people and the team. You have to let them know if they're doing growth, great, or not. So regular sprint, sprint retrospectives are really good, but they are focusing on more product development most of the time. So what we, do, what we did was a T60 feedback mechanisms. And it's not for not for just benefit part or HR part. It's just for Kaizen. Sitting down and talking to each other, only each other, only about us, on people to improve ourselves. So every quarterly, we decided, we did only once, I'm not gonna lie, but we're gonna do it in quarterly to let us, let each other know 
that we are doing good or great. So they evaluate everybody. Oops. So as I was saying, agility in IT is good, but it has to involve business. So I have two main topics for business interaction. The first one is MVP, minimum viable product. Running agile on IT doesn't make your company an agile company. You have to, you have to work with business to make it to get more benefit out of it. And it's our mission to have business involved. Sometimes they are aware of it, sometimes they don't. Oops. So again, this is not Agile 101, but this is the product, this is the minimum viable product. If you are doing Agile, you should focus on minimum viable product to understand if it works, if you have to work on more or not. This is a traditional way of working. You have a, you have a um, cycle, you build, you test, you analyze, you learn, then you release it. In minimum viable product way of thinking, the testing part deals with the release itself. So you may not know well about the minimum viable product, but I really love this slide. There are hundreds of books that explains minimum, what minimum viable product is. But you don't push business to understand it. Use this slide. The one at the upper side we have, a, we have a tendency to make it perfect, right? We know beforehand that we are going to make a car. We know it. So when you think about agile, you think about breaking down the project into small pieces. But at the, at the upper side, you do it with the wheels and the body, and then you assemble them. This is not the way agile is. You're just breaking the project into single, into smaller parts, but it is smaller waterfall project management. If you want to test something, if you want to do something that affects the way you do business, you have to focus on what you really want to do. So you want something that moves. Okay. Fail fast and change things. If you go back, not that much. Oops. Okay. If you failed here on stage three, you're fine. It happens. You're fine. But if you fail here, you lost everything. You can't pivot here. You can't do something else. You can't do it here. So it's very essential that your business people should know what MVP is. And they, they must realize failing is okay because we are testing the water. The second one is planning. So back to basics, Agile Manifesto, deadline versus making customers happy. You have a plan. What is your success? What is your definition of success? Doing everything according to the plan and fail or something else? But as IT, I mean, you have to hit yourself too because planning is essential. As an executive, you have to make plans. You have to have budgets. But you have to let executives know that there are guidelines, not strict some scripts 
like religion scripts. It should be a guideline. So we are changing the way we plan at the MXPT. The solution that we got, we have different time-based planning. So on the yearly plans, the strategy is the focus, the KPIs. During the year, what are we going to improve? What sort of, what sort of projects that we should work on to improve that, those KPIs? We are not focusing on deadlines. We are focusing on the relativity, the time difference, the position of the projects within the year. Then it goes down to quarterly plan. Quarterly plan begins with the team, to product owner, to product management, to stakeholders, to executives, then down. It's a wave. Then everybody agrees on within the quarter what sort of projects that we should work on. And on the sprint planning, it's plain scrum. We know within the three months, there are things that we should, fo we should focus on, and they all have their priorities. And let's get started, okay? And in fact, just last presentation, Halil was here, and Halil was talking about SAFE, the scaled uh, Scrum, and I was amazed. This is what I was doing, and they have a name for it. And agility and product development. So we think we are a technology company, okay? And due to our nature, IT department has the knowledge. They all know all the procedures. And it's, it's foolish not to take advantage of it. So we are working with our product managers and the projects that we are working on should be KPI or metric driven, so everybody understand what we want, to, we want to achieve. We need to have the big picture. Okay, we are going to do this, 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 this within the three, you know, three months quarter plan, and we are going to improve these KPIs. And we're not going to tell you as a business that you have to do this, take this one and put it here, but you help me how to do it, how to reach to that KPI. So do, as I say, on time, on budget, and produce that product. It's a product commitment. It's fine, by the way. We may not be there, but it's fine. But it's not enough. It's not enough. We believe good teams should commit on KPIs. Not just products alone. KPIs that are the main reason we do the project. Okay? We need to increase the convergence rate by 10%. What's KPI? K uh, performance indicators. So, convergence one of the KPIs. What, why are you doing it? How you measure it? That's the KPI. You have to know it, I mean, as a team. Not just business, not just IT, as a team. And then you all come together. In fact, this is the only way business and technology teams come together, you know, talk about the problem, Try to find a way to achieve that KPI. If you do, as an IT, IT guy, you can promise on the KPI. If not, if no one is asking you, then you should only commit for the product itself. Okay? But if, you are, if you want to be a successful company, you have to diminish the territories, the borderline between IT and business, and become a team. 
In fact, I was very fortunate to talk the CIO of Gilt, a very famous company in the US. What, how they perform, how they build or form team is based on KPIs. So their upper management team says, okay, this is the KPI that we are gonna implement. They don't talk about projects. So related business people with IT team come together and begin to implement some projects. And upper management judge them only by the KPIs. So they are very free to work on which project they want because the end result is the KPI. The other one is innovation. It's very important. Knowledge, creativity, they all come together to make an innovation. And in order to innovate, you, know to, you have to know the problems. So I see so many companies saying that, okay, let's innovate. Let's, let's make some committees. They're all good efforts, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. Innovation doesn't come to you when, when somebody says, let's innovate. You have to build an innovation culture. So in our company, something that I did was that each team has a quarterly innovation sprints. Meaning that they can work on technical issues, paying technical debt, or they can work on business projects. But they all have to go through proper cycles so that they know how business can do it. Well, it's been six months. I'm so sorry that only just one team came up with an innovation sprint. They create a whole different business from bottom up. Well, that was their plan. But they have a freedom to work on that. And if everybody says it's OK, they can skip all the backlogs. And within their innovation sprint, they can do whatever they want. It didn't happen but it was a very good practice. So that they know if they really want to do something, they, they don't have to fight all the priorities, all the lists. All they have to say is, I want to do this. Because if you let new ideas float around and not do it, it just vanish. So in conclusion, agile methods are tools. They're not the aim, they're not the goal. They're just tools. We use it because, not because it's cool. I know so many companies do it because it's cool. It's not cool. It is cool, by the way. But we don't do it because it's cool, because it works. And it's, it's just a philosophy. It's, it's not project management style. You have to embrace it. And the whole company should embrace it. And the things that I talk, it's our experiment. It, one size doesn't fit all. And as Agility says, the conditions are different for you which means that you have to find your way to do it properly that works for you. But we, as the believer of the agility, here to help you voluntarily, by the way. And we should stop starting and start finishing. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of minutes, I guess. Yeah, this is what I was going to say. You might have some questions for him. I was trying to, you know, get 10 minutes, you know, Q&A session, but not that much. Please.
Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what do you think about the self-organized teams? Uh, on the other hand, uh, about the teams driven by the top three. So, John from Saibinan.com asking what I think about the self-driven organization versus uh, teams that are driven by top management. Top management. In terms of roadmaps? In terms of roadmaps. So in our planning, the yearly plan was just a guideline. And we, as executives, get the, the whole project ideas from our teams. So our team's ideas are carried away carry it up to the yearly plan. But for the quarterly plan, uh, the team involves what sort of projects that we should focus on within the quarters. So it's, it's a combination of both. Because think about it. I mean, it's very easy to blame upper executives. I'm not saying that because I'm one of them. But um, sometimes a team may not be aware of all the facts. OK? But they should be heard. They should be you know, heard that there are some things that upper management do not know, and they should be aware of that too. So it, it should be a combination. And in terms of self-organization, uh, you have to empower your team. And our team will say, there are a lot of people coming to me asking questions. And I said, why are you asking me? You do it. And people in my team asking where, should, where they should sit. I don't care. It shouldn't be my job, OK? It shouldn't be my job to decide who is sitting where. It should be their job. Um, what else? I show other. OK. Uh, t -t 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 one, two, three, four, seven, I guess. Seven. Because we have so many different um, products. MXAPT and Fudonkl is just one of them. We have other four products, one with uh, dealing with all the backlogs, and we have an infrastructure team. Last question. Do you see a friendly competition between the teams? Or? Hmm. Since we are working on the, um, we have so many you know, different KPIs. If you're asking, in terms of company, it's the orders, it's the visiting numbers, it's frequency, it's the average basket size, you name it. I mean, these are the things that you think represent the whole business. And those are the KPIs that if you miss something, you may not know what's going on. So you have to think KPIs is this way. Any other question? No? This one? If I understand you right, you said that you give feedback to each other in every quarter. Is this correct? On people based, yes. But on sprints, of course, we have ret retrospectives. Every one week or every two weeks. We don't, we don't, but it's just a formal way. It's just a focusing on just four people. Of course, if you have a problem, you have to deal with it right away. But that period is just for specifically for peoples and the way they should develop themselves. So that's right. I mean, we, we shouldn't wait that much. It's just a formal way to, you know, give proper time because you never have proper time if you don't set. This is going to be done every quarterly. OK? There's one more question in the back, and then we'll stop after. OK. If you even do this retrospective weekly or bi weekly, okay. uh, when, does, when do the developers have time to do the coding? Like, when there are the number of people. <laughs> They don't. Well, but that's a good question. Maybe I should ask, but no. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Because uh, we have teams running sprints for, a, I mean, weekly or two week. 
period of time. Um, at the end of every sprint, we have reviews, we have uh, planning, and we have retrospectives. Sometimes, I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to talk, you know, hours and hours. But if you come up, if you come up with a problem, you should talk that frequently. And our team spent, I guess, a day for all the team uh, planning, review, and uh, retrospectives. Um, a day within a five-day period may seem too much, but since we plan and since we commit uh, what we plan and we manage to do it on time, it's healthy. I prefer my teams to do it in two weeks, but it's up to them. And me as a CTO, I don't evolve. It's, it's, it's team's decision how long their sprint should be. And as a manager, I have to say this, my goal, my responsibility is um, just get away with the impediments. Just erase all the impediments and get out of the way. That's my aim. Just get out of the way. Thank you. <laughs>